In this video, we have a look at nonlinear mixed effects models and how to run such analysis in R. Before you watch this video, I recommend that you first watch the basic video about nonlinear regression as well as the videos about linear mixed effects models. Mixed effects models are called mixed because they include both fixed and random effects. Fixed effects represent things like the population mean that do not vary. These may represent the population parameters that we like to estimate in, for example, linear regression. Random effects represent parameters that can vary between groups of dependent data points. For example, if you do several measurements on the same individual, the mean of these measurements can represent one estimated parameter. Each individual may then have a unique estimate. Let's have a look at an example where one has injected a drug into four subjects. After 10 minutes, a blood sample was taken where the concentration of the drug was determined. For example, the first person had a drug concentration of about 121 mg per liter in the blood after 10 minutes. The concentrations of the drug were measured over a range of different time points where the unit in this example is minutes. Also, the first two subjects are women, whereas subject number three and four are men. By assuming that the drug is eliminated from the body by simple exponential decay, we can estimate the initial concentration of the drug in the blood, as well as the elimination rate. We can estimate these two parameters separately for each individual by using simple nonlinear regression that we have discussed in a previous video. To estimate the parameters, I will here use the statistical software R. We can enter the data like this, where we plug in the time points and the drug concentrations of each individual. Then we create one long vector including all the measurements of the four subjects and a corresponding vector for the time points, where the sequence of the time points is repeated four times, so that these two vectors have the same length. We here code the two women as zeros and the two men as ones. Then we need one vector that defines the subjects. For example, since we have eight measurements on the first individual, we need eight ones. And since we have eight measurements on the second individual, we need eight twos, and so forth. Then we create a data frame and plot the data. If we run the code, we'll get the following figure. These two circles represent the concentration of the drug in the blood of the two women after 10 minutes. Whereas these two triangles represent the concentration in the two men at the same time point. Suppose that we like to estimate y0 and k for the first person. Then we run the same code as we did in the lecture about nonlinear regression. We see that the first person has an estimated initial concentration of the drug in the blood that is equal to approximately 148.5, and that the elimination rate is about 0.02 per minute. If we estimate the two parameters for each individual separately, we see that the four individuals have very different initial concentrations of the drug in the blood, whereas the elimination rate of the drug is about the same for all four individuals. The two women seem to have a higher initial concentration than the men, which might be due to that they have a smaller body size. We can also estimate the two parameters based on all the data from all four persons. If we instead use the long vector including all measurements and the corresponding time points. These two estimated parameters can be seen as the average initial concentration and the average elimination rate, or like estimates of these two parameters in the population. Let's place these two estimates up here. We will now try to use a nonlinear mixed effects model to estimate the parameters. 
You will here use the NLME package, which you first need to install before you load it. We then need to create a group data object, which defines the main variables of the model. Then we run the nonlinear mixed effects model by using the function NLME, where we plug in the nonlinear function, just as we did when we used the NLS function. We also need to include our data and include some initial guesses of our parameters. So far, the inputs are basically the same as we use in the NLS function. What's new here is that we have to determine the fixed and random effects of the model. Since we previously noted a large variation of the values in y0 and almost no variation in the values of k, it seems reasonable to use a random intercept model where each subject will have its own estimate of y0 and that the value of k is assumed to be equal for all four individuals. In the fixed part of the model, we place the parameters that we like to estimate. We can think like we now try to estimate the following model to the data, where i represents each individual. Similar to before, we will estimate the two parameters y0 and k. The difference in nonlinear mixed effects models is that we now have a random effect here, which will tell how much each individual differs from the estimated population mean y0. The difference in y0 values among the individuals in the population are assumed to be normally distributed. The estimate of y0 can be seen as the estimate of the mean of all y0 values in the population, whereas y0i can be seen as the spread of the y0 values around this mean. If we run the code and print the output, we see that y0 has been estimated to about 130.3, which should correspond to the estimated value of y0 when we used all data in the nonlinear regression example. The difference in these values is mainly due to that the two R functions are based on different numerical methods. We also see that K has been estimated to about 0 0.02. We can also extract the random effects. This output tells us that parcel number 3 has an estimated value of Y0 that is 38.4 smaller than the overall mean, whereas this value tells us that person number 1 has an estimated y0 value that is about 19.3 bigger than the overall mean. If we put the overall mean here, and how much each individual deviates from the mean here, then we can calculate the estimated y0 value for each person. Note that these values are quite similar to the y0 values we obtained when we fitted the nonlinear model separately for each individual. Based on this information, we can now place the four different curves in the plot that show the fitted values for each individual. Like this. So, what is the advantage of using a nonlinear mixed effects model compared to separate estimates for each individual? One advantage is that we use all data points to estimate this parameter, which will generally result in a lower standard error compared to if we estimate this parameter on each individual, because the nonlinear mixed effects model is based on more data points. Also, since the nonlinear mixed effects model allows for random intercepts, the data points will be much closer to the fitted curves. Compared to if we fit the regular nonlinear regression model to all the data points. By using a nonlinear mixed effects model, we can extend it so that we can, for example, also include the factor 6 in the model. For example, we will here test if men and women have different values of the parameter y0. The initial guess of the factor, in this case, is how much difference there is, on average, in the y0 values between men and women, we here set that initial guess to zero. Such model will generate the following output, which tells that women, which were coded as zeros, have an overall intercept for an average y0 value of about 160. 
whereas the men have an intercept that is 59.5 lower than the average intercept for the two women. We can calculate the estimated Y0 values for each person like this. We plug in the intercept of the baseline category, which is the women in this case, because they were coded as zeros. Then we plug in the estimated difference between the men and the women, and the random effects. The individual intercepts will be estimated to about the same values as in the previous model, which did not include the factor 6. We can then compare a model with or without the factor 6. We can select the most appropriate model based on, for example, the one with the lowest ASC value. We study the p-value from the likelihood ratio test. Since the p-value is less than the general significance level of 0.05, we reject the simpler model in favor of the model including the variable 6. This means that women have, on average, a significantly higher initial concentration of the drug in the blood compared to the men. Finally, we will end this video where we allow for a random effect of the elimination rate k on the drug. We then simply add the parameter k here, which will result in that each individual now has its own estimate of k. However, note that these values are very small, which means that the subjects differ very little from the estimated overall mean. This suggests that it is unnecessary to include k as a random effect in the model. Adding too much parameters in the model will generally cause problems for the method to converge. Also, by using the summary function on output object, we can extract things like the ASC value and the log likelihood of the model, and the estimate the standard deviation of the random effects. These estimates show that individuals have a relatively large spread in the estimated values of Y0 but less spread in the estimated values of the parameter k. This part of the output shows the inference of the estimated fixed effects and the correlation between the two parameters. Remember from the second lecture about nonlinear regression that there will be a problem in the parameter estimation if the correlation is too strong. This was the end of this basic video about nonlinear mixed effects models. Thanks for watching.